How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar, and today I want to show you how I'm going to connect these permanently mounted Helion 360 watt panels into my EcoFlow Delta Pros in this detached garage behind me. Now, I have six of these panels configured in two separate strings of three panels a piece. Then those two sets of PV wire come into an easy solar junction box that brings the wire through the asphalt shingle roof where the wires then come in here. You can see them just dangling here, but I need to get those permanently mounted with a DC isolator switch and then ultimately landing where I can easily connect one string per EcoFlow Delta Pro. These two Delta Pros come together in what's called a dual voltage hub and then that dual voltage hub provides 30 amps at 240 volts into a generator inlet that powers this entire garage, which is off grid. So let me show you how I'm gonna route that through some conduit, land those in a four x four metal box, and then connect those up to the DC isolator. So this will be a much more fit and finish setup. And then additionally, I need some ability to take those same six panels in a little different configuration and then bring that solar input into the high voltage side of this monster, which is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. This is the next level up from the EcoFlow Delta Pro, which is coming out in early 2024. So I need that flexibility to configure the system to either land it in both of those EcoFlow Delta Pros in the garage, or bring it into the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra here in the basement of the home that's connected up to the new Smart Panel 2 and really trying to power this whole house with it. Now I'll show you a little bit more about this guy later, but first let's go ahead and get that all configured out in the detached garage. Now I already had the PV wires coming in with MC4 connectors on them. So I'm going to kind of lay them out in the rough path and then do my best guess at where to cut those. So hopefully I can reuse the ends that have the MC4 connectors on them. So I'll just take my Nipix wire strippers, cut the lines, and then we'll start to piece together the conduit. Now this is just standard EMT conduit, three quarters of an inch in diameter. I'll use my bender. And what I'm trying to do is do a 45 degree angle on this first piece. I'm gonna to put together three pieces of conduit and then that's gonna form up my whole run from the asphalt shingle roof down to a four by four metal box. Now I'm going to be piecing through the wires and pulling them through each of those three pieces of conduit. That is not necessarily best practice and technically against code in many areas, but because these wires are already existing and the insulated ground that I just added, which is six gauge and ties to the ground, which goes to the panels, so I can ground that the six different panels on that roof, you would want to put together your conduit usually first and then pull your wires through. And I'll give you a little bit more tips on that here in a second. So I'm just gonna drill a hole here through this top plate so I can get the conduit coming from that metal four x four box as you see at the bottom of your screen. So once I have the spade bit all the way through, then I'll piece together my second piece, which is just gonna be a straight run from that four x four box up, getting us up through that top plate. And then my last piece is going to have another 45 degree bend in it. And then we'll connect up and complete that run. Once I have everything measured out and it looks like it's going to fit, then I will start to run the wires through the conduit. Again, this is not your ideal scenario uh, where you'd want to piece all that together. It'll make it a lot easier piecing that conduit together. And then you can put a fish tape up and through and hopefully you have a buddy there to help you with the pull of wires through your completed conduit. So I'll just tighten everything up. And then what this equals is I have two unions connecting up there in the middle and then two connectors, one going in easy solar junction box on the roof and then one going into this four x four box here. So that's the permanent portion. So I'll finish off the grounding of the panels by bringing the insulated six gauge stranded wire over to the sub panel and then stripping that down and landing it right next to the six gauge bear that goes out to uh, two ground rods for this structure. 
Now for this video and really all my videos, I'm just showing you my experience and what I'm doing. This is not necessarily going to meet codes in your areas. Every state or jurisdiction is going to be a little different. And when we're bringing in something that's permanently mounted to portable power stations, that is a little bit of a gray area. But for this setup, now I have my two different sets of PV wire coming into the 4x4 box and then I'm going to bring back the pieces that I cut off earlier with the MC4 connectors. I'm going to bring those out of the bottom here of the 4x4 box on the cable clamps and then we'll bring those wires together in a Wago 221 lever net. Specifically, these are the 600 series that can handle 10 gauge wire because that's the type of cable that we're working with. Now, if you need a link, check right below the video in the description. I'll give you links to this product and then also products like this DC isolator. This is a pretty cheap one from Amazon, but it's going to do the trick for me. I'm going to mount it here on this blocking that I put in place and then run those MC4 connectors down here and then out of that DC isolator, that's where I'll plug into my EcoFlow Delta Pros, but also have that capability to switch it up for that EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. And the timing's pretty good. You can see the sun's starting to come up, so we should be able to get this all wired up and then test it out, bringing solar power into each of these EcoFlow Delta Pro, proving out that everything's working. So let's finish up the wiring. So I'll bring the first set through the wire connector, and I did mark the positive and negative on the first set of uh, panels so I could identify that within the 4x4 box. I am using the 613 Wago lever nuts. That is a three wire, so I do have an open wire slot that's perfectly fine within this 4x4 box. Connect up that second set, strip off enough wire, and the nice thing is you can see through the housing to see that everything is fully seated within the Wago lever nuts. Once we have that, we'll put on our cover plate, get everything tucked away, and tighten the two screws. Then the DC isolator is very easy. We have those two sets of MC4 cables coming down, two mounting screws, and then I have my DC isolator mounted. Then I'll connect up into input one and input two and take conversion cables that go MC4 to XT60i for the EcoFlow Delta Pros and go into output one and output two. Now, if you've watched this video and you're like, oh, that is a little intimidating and I don't want to dive that deep into it, but I really do want solar on my house. I want to start offsetting my monthly power bill. I do get that. And some of these projects can be quite intimidating and just something that you really don't want to take on yourself. Now, if you're interested to start exploring how large of a system do you need and how much would that cost, you can start where I did. And that is a link in the description to start plugging in information about my home. Where would I mount those panel? What my monthly power bill is and a few other details which within five minutes you can get an estimate on the size of the system you would need to offset that monthly power bill and the cost then if that's something that looks reasonable for this year or maybe next year you can go ahead and get connected with installers in the area and get actual quotes to see actually what that would cost to get it on your home so let's go ahead and turn this isolator on flip the switch and see what's coming into the delta pros now this one's down to 5%, so I actually do need solar in this one to start charging it up so I can power this garage. Remember, this is the only power source for this garage. And it looks great. We're, the sun's just coming up, so some of the panels do have shade on them. This string of three panels looks to have less shade because it's running 330 or so watts, and then this one's running 240 watts input power. Now these panels will probably max out here in the winter time around the 600 to 700 watt range, which is a good amount of solar power coming into each of these units every day. Now the last detail for this setup that I'll show you is I did need some flexibility to bring those six panels into that EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. So let me show you how I'm doing that and then how I'm actually gonna get that over to the house. Remember in the garage, the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is over in the house basement. Now here's where the isolator is really handy because I can turn off both those outputs and disconnect both of the EcoFlow Delta Pros. EcoFlow Delta Pros can handle 150 volts to the solar input. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra can handle up to 450 volts. So the little bit of reconfiguration I need to do is just bringing both of those into series. So I have a little jumper here that brings both outputs into series, and then I connect up my MC4 connectors to the Ultra. The question is, how the heck do I get this from the garage to the house? So let me show you how I brought that over. 
Now I do have inch and a half PVC conduit sunk 24 inches in the ground and running over to this side of the property where it goes into the house. So I have the inch and a half coming out to an LB where I could pull the solar wires through and then going into the basement. That location is right at the smart panel too. And then I bring those PV wires down into MC4 connectors and that goes into the high voltage side of the Delta Pro Ultra. So now confirming at the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, we are seeing about 800 watts of solar input. So everything's working and the setup is how I need it where I can configure it to those two different use cases. Now there are a ton of details on this Ultra and it is a substantial step up from the EcoFlow Delta Pro. So if you wanna dive deeper to see if this one will work better for you check out this video right here i'll go through all the specifications and put it through some testing so you can get a much better idea of this unit which is coming out early 2024. now the smart panel 2 that might be my favorite piece of hardware from ecoflow it has a ton of capabilities and really just opens up what you can do with some of the different hardware so depending on when you're watching this video that one might already be out and you can check that video out right here so thanks for joining me on this one and we'll catch you on one of those two videos take care